Hi, I'm Kevin Dunnan and you're watching Hip World Gourmet. Welcome to Dunbrody, the sunny southeast part of Ireland. Over the next few weeks, you and I are going to be discovering some great recipes. Also, we're going to be travelling around and I'm going to be introducing you to some of the finest producers of the area. So why don't you come with me now while we discover together new recipes. So today I'm going to show you how to make an asparagus and saffron broth, which was absolutely amazing. I came across this recipe by accident. I was in the cookery course here, and there was one, one student who was allergic to cream, and so I made the soup without cream, which is very unusual for me because I love my cream. And we're going to follow, follow by Wexford rack of lamb with an orange and passion fruit glaze over top. It's going to finish in the oven, and we're going to serve it on a confit of cherry tomatoes and a bit of port wine jus and some pesto and we're gonna finish with this amazing, dramatic, stunning dessert of a pastry cage fill, filled with summer berries, grand marnier ice cream, and finish with a sugar cage on top. We're gonna to start, start off by um, chop it up. Now, you don't need to be too fussy about this, right? Now, this is the secret how to, how to chop an onion. You get your knife and you, you go through, but you're not going all the way through to the back. You do that all the way across. Okay, and then you get your knife and you put it sideways. Watch your fingers. Okay. And then you just slice through like that and you can see it's chopping up nicely. Okay, so there's, there's your asparagus and your onions done and then we've got Two cloves of garlic, which are very handy because they're already peeled. So there, there's the main ingredients, but we have one very special ingredient which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. So we're going to start by a little bit of vegetable oil. Not too much because you don't want to make the soup too greasy. Mix your ingredients into the pot. Now it's very important at this, at this point is that you season, season your vegetable. What, what that does is the salt actually starts extracting the flavor from your vegetables. So this is really the fundamental, fundamentals of making any soup. You sweat off your vegetables first. The color looks fantastic. Okay. So I'm just using a, a white wine, which is our house wine. It's a dry white wine. Talk about the herbs that we're using. We're using a rosemary herb. This is a wild rosemary. It's uh, you can really, really smell it. I remember it, it reminds me of being down in the Provence region of France. I'm walking through the woodlands there and you can smell rosemary and thyme and stuff like that. And it's really bringing the earth back into the thing. So what you're using is you're using the asparagus that's coming from the earth, you've got the root, the root bulb of the, of the onion and then you've got the herbs coming, coming really, really earthy sort of flavours coming through. Then we have saff saffron. Saffron is, is an amazing herb. It's probably the most, it is in fact the most, most expensive uh, ingredient that, that we use in our kitchens here. Basically you need, there's three strands of saffron in every saffron flower and you actually need 70, 75,000 flowers in order to create one pound in weight of saffron. But, so you can imagine hence why it's so labour intensive to pick saffron, that's why it's so expensive. So, but the flavour is stunning so it's really worthwhile. I'm going to add a little bit of water because remember I was saying I was making a bit of stock. Just put a bit of 
black pepper. Black pepper. Now, I'm going to make a bunch of these asparagus and I'm actually going to tie them with a chive. Fresh food. So basically you just drop your chive in just for a second because you just want to make a pliable so you can, so you can work on it. I'm going to drop in my asparagus. Now I don't want to cook them too, too long because I want them nice and crisp and um, chunky. So bas basically that's the asparagus cooked. So you just, again you just want a light, lightly cooked. Place like this, then you just tie, tie it in a nut. Trim off the excess. Try and get this to stand. You always taste your soup before, or anything that you do, just before you serve it. I'm just going to put a little bit of flat parsley in there, just roughly chopped. Okay? Don't, don't be too fussy with it. You can actually rip it with your fingers if you want, or just use a knife. The knife was there, so it's handy. So. just to give it that really, really fresh kind of look. So, this is all about um, you know, good earthy soup. Oops. There you have it, an amazing, healthy, Soup. Now if you want to be a little bit devilish, you can put a little bit of cream in there. So you finish off the cream just at the end there, just before you put the soup in, put a bit of cream in and then put a few knobs of butter in, stir it in and you've got this really, really rich, delicate, delicate soup. So enjoy. Fruit garden now, so lots of things happening here. We've lots of strawberries. So I'm gonna be surprised, aren't I? Let's <laughs> well, find out. if there's any left after um, birds and me <laughs> and Mickey. And you. <laughs> well, I just tried Jeez, one. I thought I only had rabbits I mean, to worry about. The gardener's prerogative. You I have I, to taste. I thought I only had rabbits to worry about. I've got rosemary to worry rosemary about too. Rosemary rabbit as well. <laughs> oh, look, here we go. Oh, that's money. Okay, Walk okay. Away. <laughs> Well, seeing as you haven't done any yet, is it okay? okay ah, excellent. excellent, perfect. Mmm. Smells good. I just see any. Flavor is stunning. Yeah, so uh, this is their first year, so there won't be a fantastic amount of, of strawberries on it. But next year it'll be it'll be much improved. You know, it just it'll take them time to settle down. Mm. So um, yeah, it should be. I good. spot another one. Spot, I see a few actually. Oh, don't <laughs> worry, I'll come back later. <laughs> These raspberries are great though, because they're autumn bliss. Okay, they're gorgeous flavour. Yeah, they're, they're really, really big. Mm -hmm. and, and then they start, we start getting fruit from July right through to the end of October. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Really There's good. something about raspberries, the flavour of them. Raspberries and chocolate. Are All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. <laughs> Let's try that. <laughs> it's nearly as good as sex, but not quite. <laughs> Okay, I'll try it and see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you my verdict. <laughs> oh, will you? All right. That's great. And these are all our cherry trees, aren't they? Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. give it a I tell minutes. you, you're doing a great job here. It's absolutely <laughs> stunning. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, actually. It's yeah. quite a challenge. But well, why not? I mean, it's glorious. I know. And such a gorgeous place. It's just amazing. And the trees and everything. There's some blackcurrants going oh, on good. there. Yeah, you'll have a great crop of those. So there you have our fruit garden, all organic, and it's absolutely excellent. And bearing in mind, it's our first year growing today, this year.
So did you enjoy that? But now we're going to go on and we're going to start with the amazing rack, rack of lamb, which is Wexford rack, rack of lamb. You probably saw, you saw some uh, lamb, lambs as we were going, traveling through the countryside. But anyways, we, we get on to the, la the lamb dish. So anyways, we'll start with it. So put a heat on, on the pan. And then you put some oil. Okay, really what you want to do here is what we want to um, season, season your lamb. Again, going back to the vegetables again, and all food, all food should be seasoned just before you start cooking them. And again, that extracts the flavor out of, out of the meat or vegetables, whatever you do. Good bit of black pepper. See that sitting there now. Nice. The bones come in handy to hold on to the meat. Not you can use the tongs. Okay, just take it off the pan, the pan again. What we want to do then is with your marmalade. Now you can use ordinary orange marmalade if you want. Drizzle it over a bit of passion fruit. You can use black currant, jam, whatever you have in the larder. But this combination works really, really well. Just sprinkle the, the herbs there. You can already see, I mean, that looks nearly ready to eat. It's not quite. You wait till you see when it comes out of the oven. Okay, we're going to put that into the, into the oven now. I've got it at a fairly high temperature. I've got it, I've got it at 220 degrees, uh, that's Celsius, and uh, I'm going to leave it in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. I like my lamb rare to medium rare, but it's up to yourself. Now we're going to sit the lamb on the, on the plate with a confit of cherry tomatoes and leeks. So here's your leeks. You cut it down lengthways. Okay, on an angle then, always when you're, when you're chopping, you see the way my, my fingers are there now? The, the nails are inside there, so when I go down, I'm not gonna cut the top of my fingers off. We use nail clippers for that. So cherry tomatoes then. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of oil into the pot. Then good old Irish butter. We use salted butter for everything over here. We don't use unsalted butter. Now, I always put uh, a little bit of oil in with the butter. And what that, what that does is it stops it from burning. It gets it to a higher temperature before it starts burning. In with your cherry tomatoes. Again, very important, with the salt and pepper. Just keep it moving in the pan, I mean, you can use a spoon. They look about just about right. I'd imagine that the lamb is just about ready. Let's check it. Oh, look at that. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna just move it onto the chopping board. Leave it sit there for about 10 minutes to let it rest. So, that, so therefore when we cut into the meat, the blood's not gonna run out completely. So, excellent. Okay, I'm just going to heat up a little bit of um, port wine jus, or a bit of sauce. So basically then to, to plate up, you've got the, the confit of cherry tomatoes and the leeks you can see looks really, really good there. So you put that into the center of the plate.
like so. Best way to do cut a rack of lamb is you hold the bones like that. And you just cut in between the, the, between the bones. Some crispy basil. That's, that's just basil leaves. Cooked, cooked in a little bit of oil. Until they go crispy. Again, the style of food that I do, it's full of textures. And I think textures are very important when you're eating because you're getting crunchy, you're getting smooth, you're getting juicy, and you're getting, and it's just really making your taste buds flow and experience different textures in your food. So a bit of pesto then, just drizzle around the plate. That's all, you don't need very much because don't forget, you don't want to compete with all the, all the flavors. Just a very small drizzle of this. Just over the lamb, just to bring out the flavors. A little bit on the plate there. There you have it. An excellent rack of lamb with a orange and passion fruit and herb crust served on a confit of leeks and tomatoes, a little bit of pesto, and finish off with a bit of port wine jus or red wine jus, whatever you've got. Listen, enjoy. <laughs>
Leave that in your fridge for about a half an hour just to let it rest and then, um, then we're going to go to the next stage. Now I've actually made some earlier just, uh, and I put it into a piping bag. What we're going to do is just Okay, this is um, a mat that goes into the oven. It's a flexible mat. It doesn't burn, it looks like plastic. But it, if you don't have one of those, you can use silicone paper set on a, on a baking sheet to go into the oven. So what you want to do is think of a boot or an L, an L shape. L like that, then up part. Like so. We're going to put that into the oven for about, about five to six minutes. You'll see it going golden brown. And then we're, then we're going to mold it. All right, so let's take this out of the oven. Now you need to work. You can see it's the way it's golden brown there. You need to work fairly fast on this, but it's, it's basically quite simple. Put your rolling pin on here and you roll it roll it down like that basically you're holding your hand down like that by pressing it in so like so get some whipped cream make a form at the bottom and what that what's that's actually doing this is actually holding your pastry in place then we're going to start building it up by adding some fruit that was marinated in that Grand Marnier. Cream. Sit it on top, like so. Okay. Put a little bit of sugar sitting on top, like that. And we're going to finish it off with some fruit compote. This fruit compote also has a bit of Grand Marnier, bringing back to all the flavors. Bit of fresh garden mint on top. There you have it, a dramatic, stunning fruit, fresh fruit from the garden, fresh Grand Marnier ice cream that we made, nice biscuit. So there you have it, an amazing, dramatic dessert. We started off today by doing asparagus and saffron broth with a bunch of asparagus in the center, a great presentation, followed by a of Wexford lamb with a passion fruit and orange marmalade, confit of cherry tomatoes, leeks, drizzled with pesto, finished off with this amazing dessert. There you have it. Thanks for watching Hip World Gourmet. Schlante, till next time.